There are a lot of small RGB lights out right now, but very few of them you can do this. Make a mess. Water everywhere. <laughs> and I can turn the light on. See? Look at that. It's underwater. This is a new light from Digital Photo, the Tree Frog. Introducing the Digital Photo Tree Fog IP67 waterproof RGB light, which means it can go down to about one meter in water. In the box is a nice case that holds the light and accessories. In the top, you have the manual, you have this nice white rubber diffuser, and then you also have this honeycomb grid that narrows the light. Both of these are made out of rubber, and that's a good thing because they can go in the water. Under the light, you have a little mini tripod, which is quite nice, actually. A, in this bag, there's a cold shoe, or as DF calls it, a cradle head and comes out of that little bag. And the nice thing is you can actually take off the cold shoe, unscrew it like so, and then put it on the mini tripod. So I can now mount the light even with this rubber cover. That's another thing that's included is this rubber cover. And it's very nice for protecting the light. And then you can screw it on here like so. And then you have a nice way of holding the light. But you can also use this other part to mount it on a camera. Also included in this little box are two USB cables. This first USB cable is a USB-C to USB-A cable for charging. You can also use a USB-C to USB-C cable for charging. And there's also a USB-C to USB-A cable. And the reason for this cable is you can charge a cell phone because the light on this side right here has a USB-C port that gives you 5 volts. You can plug this cable that they supply into a phone or a, another light and charge it from the 400 milliamp battery in this light. Then on the other side, on the bottom, is the USB-C charging port. And I have to say, because this is not the charging port, I have, I have tried to charge it with this, and it didn't do anything because it's an output, not an input. So I had to remember that the bottom port is your charging port. The white rubber diffusing cover slides onto the light through, this, through the ends. I just pull this over here and do it like so. And there you see the cover is on here. These are Velcro, so you can adjust how it holds it. I find you really don't need to. You can just pull it on and off. But one of the main reasons you need this diffuser is because the bulbs under here are bare. There is no diffusion on this light. so. You want to use this diffusion cover on this light, especially if you're going to put it on a camera and point it at somebody. You don't want to put the bare bulbs in their face. But the light is much brighter without this diffusion cover. The light weighs 408 grams with the diffuser and 328 without the rubber cover or the diffuser. As you can see, this is a relatively large pocket light. Its dimensions are 152 millimeters by 80 millimeters by 
16 millimeters. The thing is made out of CNC aluminum, so it feels really good in the hand and should be good at dissipating heat as well. For mounting the light, you have these quarter 20 holes, two of them, one right in the center of the light and one off to the right hand side of the light. There is also one on the left hand side of the light. There's a quarter 20 if you want to mount it vertically. The light is simple to use. To turn the light on, you have a power button right here by this icon. You hold it in and Dia Photo should come on after about two seconds. Once that comes on, you can actually turn on the light, but you hit the power button lightly again, and then the light comes on. I'm at 20% right now, and to increase the percentage, you just hit this top plus button, like so, and there it goes. And it goes all the way up to 100%, which I'm doing right now. And we're at 100%. And you'll see in just a moment, it's quite bright. And you can also go the opposite direction by holding the minus key down, and then it will go down. It takes a little while for these to go down, but as you can see, it's doing it, and will be all the way down to nothing at zero, and even 1%. Here's 1%, and uh, on my hand, Actually, that's not too bad. So it can go anywhere in between that by hitting the plus and minus buttons. Also on the right hand side, you'll see the M button. The M button is a mode button. If I hit it once, it goes to the effects modes. And as you can see here, it says scene one. The, their spelling is a little different than I'm used to for scene, by the way. And if I hit it again, it will take you to HSI. And then you can hit the M button again, and it takes you back to CCT. You can also change the color temperature of the light with these arrow buttons, up arrow and a down arrow. The up arrow goes up to 8500, and if you go down, you can go down to 5500, which is what I like for daylight. There's 5500. You can also go all the way down to 3200, even below 3200. There's 3200, you can see how warm that is and go all the way down to 2500, which is really warm. And then I can also take it back to 5500, which is what I like for daylight and what I use for accurate color temperature. And now I'm going to switch to the effects, which is just one push on M. As you can see, there is scene one, which is a cop light. I like their spelling of scene. It's certainly different than ours. You can hit the function button to go to the next one, which is an ambulance. And then the third one's a fire truck. And this is lightning. Number four, number five is a faster lightning. Number six is an HSI where it's going through to different colors, as you can see there. Number seven is an HSI. It's a little bit faster. TV mode, which pretends that you're watching a TV on number eight. Number nine is a fire. Number 10 is a flash, paparazzi mode. And you can see there are quite a few modes in this thing. Scene 12 is high and low beam lights. We got high and low beam. This is double flash number 13. Red flash, green flash, blue flash, 
and this is a party light a second party light breathing white is this and then the last one is an RGB strobe and those are the effects of this light and we'll go to the next one which is HSI and HSI is how you adjust your colors again you use the up or down arrows to adjust your color that's 240 which was blue now let's go to 360 or 0 which will be red coming up right now as, as it goes through it takes a little while for it to go through but there's red and you can see it goes all 0 is red and you can go up to 120 which is green and we're heading towards that right now and of course you have all the colors in between that as well and we're almost there at 120 there it is our hundred and you can see that's very green again I can use the dim buttons up top to make it brighter or less on the color you also can hit the function button and decrease the saturation from a hundred percent all the way down to zero like so you just go down and go up on your saturation and there it went all the way down and see it cycles all the way through and now we're back at 100 and then function takes us back to the H of and that's how it just you adjust the different colors as you can see on the light there is this graph and in really 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 tiny letters they have the numbers for the primary colors and that basically takes you through all the controls of this little light as I said earlier on the right end at the bottom there is an output for 5 volts and you can plug into that output with this cable and we will do that like so I'm going to take this little short lightning cable and plug that into here and then I'll plug that into my phone and it beeps and tells me it's charging so with this light I am charging my phone I'm using it this light as a power bank we will remove the phone now I'll take the USB a to C cable that came with this light plug it in like so and then I can plug that into this little small light I have here plug it in the USB C port and the light comes on and says hello and says I'm charging so you can charge a little light as well or anything that takes 5 volts USB-C or A. Another nice feature of this light is that it's magnetic. I can pop it on something and it will stay there. And that's handy if you want to mount it on metal. I cannot show you a smartphone app because there is none. It would have been convenient to have one. And now we'll turn to measurements for this light. The light has 218 LED beads 60 white beads plus 60 yellow beads plus 98 RGB beads. How bright is this light? 2250 lux at 0.5 meters. With the white diffuser on the light, 1614 lux at 0.5 meters. So what about the light quality of this light? We have a professional spectrometer and we tested the light. The 5500 color setting of the light was measured at 4794 Kelvin, which is a little bit warmer than the 5500 daylight setting. Now let's look at the colors of this light. There are a lot of old and new standard considering the quality of light. The color rendering index a la CRI 
resulted in a 95,4 and it is really good for a cinema light. We took thermal pictures of the light to see how hot it would get in regular usage. And as you can see, the thermal is quite well controlled. There are so many uses for a little light like this besides on camera. With the RGB adjustment, it can be a colored light for backgrounds and special effects, and you can use it on people as well. The light is easy to use. The Digital Photo Tree Fog IP67 waterproof light. And of course, you can put it in water. This is Alan Halfhill for a personal view. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel, and we'll see you later.